Hello there, I see quite some people asking how to get better at Dirt Rally 1 or 2.0, more so than for any other sim racing title. I know it is frustrating ending up in trees, uh, especially when you thought you would kiss a beautiful girl up in that tree, but instead of K-I-S-S-I-N-G, all you get is D-E-R-M-I-N-A-L-D-A-M-A-G-E. So when you ask how to get better in rally games, people will just say PRACTICE! Which is true. If you were to just study rally racing theoretically and had no practical experience, you would still suck. You can see that here. I always race with a wheel, but this is me playing with an Xbox One controller. In other words, someone who knows what to do, but without the control or agility. Into four right titans. Right rear puncher. Better than a complete noob, but still sucks. Anyway, tip 1. Don't crash. Really, on a scale of 0 to 100, where 0 is standing still and 100 is crashing into a tree as fast as you can, you should probably start at around 60 to 70%, so chill down a little. Now, I know this title stemmed from Colin McRae's legacy, and I don't want to begrudge his name, but if in doubt flat out is horrible advice! Horrible! If you play the career mode and you just start out and you take it easy and just make sure you do not crash, you will see you'll win. Going off track and being reset costs you between 6 to 10 seconds. To realize how much time that is, just go ahead and stand still for 10 seconds after the 3, 2, 1, go. Go. It's a lot of time lost. You will see in the beginning levels that if you just drive safe, don't go off track, don't crash, you're not going too fast, but you'll still win if you manage to do just that. On top of that, all those crashes will actually damage your car and a busted engine can make it perform a lot worse. Tip 2, slow car. On that note, when you start the career mode, pick a slow car. Likely you won't have money for a faster one anyway. Of course Group B was the pinnacle of rallying, but for now let that be your ultimate reward, to drive one. The newer cars are a lot easier, so if you're really struggling go with the R2, then maybe R5 or the 2000s cars. If you do want to get a grip on those older, mostly rear wheel drive cars, then <laughs> HIPSTER! Go with the historical route and progress from the 60s to the 70s and to the 80s. These cars have a similar character but throughout time just built up more and more horsepower and therefore became harder and harder to drive. Tip 3, turn off the HUD, meaning the heads up display. Racing is all about focus, snap decisions while you fly past trees with 150 km an hour. You need all that unnecessary stuff off, especially the progress bar because you'll keep glancing at how you're doing in comparison to the AI. Just leave on the co-driver signs, because... Tip 4, LISTEN! Or keep an eye on the co-driver signs. For newbies you can keep these signs on in the HUD. Green signs mean you can keep going fast and you'll see the turn coming itself. More orange and yellowish means lose the gas, maybe brake and turn in the car. Red means brake. And of course listen to which way to turn I... Assume you know what is left and what is right. And if you do not, then maybe go play some oval races in iRacing. Tip 5. Use manual gear shifting. I know that for many newcomers to sim racing who come from arcade racing, this is a tough one, but seriously, if you want control over your car, you need to take that control into your own hands. You may think that shifting is just a chore and there's no advantage to doing it yourself, but well, then why is there no automatic rally cars in real life? Because shifting is a vital part of the sport. You can do lots with shifting, you can break shifting down, it's called engine braking. So let's say you're approaching a tight corner, you shift down towards the turn, it helps to brake. Opens, 120. Six right of a crest long, 250. Also, you can save yourself from flying out of a corner. Here, I'm about to be in trouble, but then I turn my back into the corner, shift down so that the engine revs, and I get my traction back quicker, so that I manage to stay in. Very long, 30. This is a very important technique. 60. Caution. 6 left. Extra, extra long. Titans 3 of a crest. 50. Also, when you're in a hairpin and you shift down to the first gear, you keep it in first until you're out of the corner. It's a way of knowing you won't go too fast and run into the corner itself. 
Here mid hairpin the engine was revving and your reflex would be to shift up as the car can go faster that way but in this case it probably would have ended up in the right wall. So you keep the car in first gear and only when you completely straighten the car you can release it into second gear and go faster. Tip 6. Turn in early. Most stages in Dirt Rally 2 are off road so the car turns a little delayed. You can however use that to your advantage. Newbies often drive reactively meaning that they first go into the corner and only then steer in. You were already told by the co-driver how sharp the turn is, so you should know how much you are to steer in. So have some balls and steer in a little before the turn, and also use... Tip 7. Weight transfer slash Scandinavian flick. If you swing from left to right or vice versa, the car will accumulate weight. Just like your mom. This means that you will turn faster. Using this technique to your advantage is called a Scandinavian flick. And no, we're not talking about a movie about troubled teenage homosexuals living in a shitty little town. Here's what that looks like. Hit a ball left. Slow 20. Keep right of a crest. Three right of a crest. So, you can use weight transfer to get through tight corners or the handbrake. It depends on the type of car which is best to use. For instance, a Group B rear wheel drive is so twitchy that you can just turn it into the corner and then step the throttle. While with a four wheel drive 2000s or R5 car, the handbrake is more of a must in tight corners. Tip 8. Modulate the throttle. On that note, with some cars that are just so powerful and especially the rear wheel drives, you have to modulate the throttle. That means to either step the gas pedal or push it halfway. For instance, this Opel Manta just cannot keep straight when you push it too hard. Also, any car on ice, snow or muddy dirt will need throttle modulation. Just listen to the car engine here and you will notice that I'm not pushing the gas continuously, but stabbing it. Opens. Into three right tightens. Into two left tightens. Thirty. Three right long. Opens tightens one long. Tip 9. When in danger, don't touch the pedals. When you feel like you lost control over the car or you're going off-road, the quickest way to gain back control over the car is to not push gas nor push brake and just work the steering wheel to get back on track. Newbies will usually just keep giving gas. No, don't you dare do that! <sighs> you fuck! Opens along of a jump, tightness, turn, four left of a jump. Better noobs will try to brake, but this can invoke understeer. Understeer basically means that it will not steer, or only slightly. So stay off the pedals and work the wheel. Just look at these examples. You'll notice that the engine sound stops. Four, fifty. Into five right of a crest. Thirty. Three left. Fifty over crest. One right tightens. Tip 10. Counter steer. So we have understeer but there is also oversteer when the car turns too quickly. This once again counts mostly for the powerful rear wheel drive cars. When you have thrown yourself into a corner and you applied too much power, you will have to counter steer. So steer into the opposite direction of the corner. Take a look here. Left. 50 over crest. One right tightens. Opens. Into two. Three right. Very long of a crest. 40. Six left of a crest, 30. Keep middle of a crest, jump into six right. Tip 11, have a Kit Kat. Uh, I mean, take Rick. Your performance is all down to focus. In game you race stage after stage, in reality the driver has a little break between every stage. Even though in reality, read WRC, stages are generally around 20 kilometers, so double that of a long stage and do a rally, you need to take a break every, say, 30 minutes or 4 stages to maximize performance. Go do some yoga, or maybe stand still halfway during the race for a nice view. Uh, also, masturbation. Tip 12. Maximize frames per second. Racing is about snap decisions and the more FPS you get, the more informed you are, the better you can make those snap decisions. Turn on the FPS counter in Steam. No worries, I'll just, I'll just wait. Check what's the hertz on your monitor and make sure you hit that at 99% of the time. So you might need to turn down some graphic settings. 
Things like anti-aliasing and shader detail are heavy settings, so consider turning those down. Yes, that does mean that console players are at a disadvantage. You guys are plebs, subhuman, but luckily we're not living in Nazi Germany where there would be this whole scheme to murder you in great numbers, so uh, it's not all that bad. Tip 13, get some good gear. Popular opinion in sim racing states more expensive gear won't make you fast. While it is true that some of the aliens, means fastest drivers in sim racing, are using but cheap old G25s, there definitely are parts of the gear that will help you. In dirt rally it would be mostly the handbrake and some load cell pedals. Not to mention the force feedback wheel, but that's rather duh. But more on this in a separate video. I did not mention car view and I've used mostly the chase view here. I, I knew you were gonna comment on this. I use the chase camera here mostly for demonstration purposes because you get a good view on the whole car, what it does, how it's going sideways or not. And I did not include car view because it is somewhat subjective. I do of course recommend the cockpit view to simulate actually being in the car because this is sim racing. So you're trying to simulate racing. So it's rather really obvious. Have you got any more tips to add for our new dear comers? Dear newcomers? <laughs> Have you got any more tips to add for our dear newcomers to Dirt Rally? Just like the veterinarian said about your beloved old family dog, put them down below. And let me know where I was factually wrong, because probably I'm not, not a professional race driver. So, anyway, if you like this video, then uh, you know what to do and uh, subscribe a double. Just consider it.